my gosh. Ladies and gentlemen, we are getting some news today that could be a black swan event or at the bare minimum, a gray swan event. And you need to know this ASAP because when I heard this news, I was like, yep, that's pretty much confirmed. First off, it started this morning a couple of hours ago, and this article came out from CNN that says Pelosi, Pelosi privately told Biden polls show he cannot win and will take down the House. Biden responded with defensiveness. And then it was reported about an hour later from Axios first that says Biden's pressure grows. Top Democrats think he'll drop out within days. Democrats reportedly told Axios they suspect he could drop out as soon as this weekend. And that is exactly the moment when this report came out that markets started to fall. At the time of recording this video, the S&P 500 or SPY, if you use the ETF to track the S&P, is down 0.7%. Biden reported to us that yesterday he tested positive for COVID and apparently reported yesterday Biden became more receptive to potentially dropping out, which leads you to the news that we're getting today and markets are basically saying, yeah, Biden's going to drop out. You do see the VIX today that is now up to $16.16, a sharp spike up over 11 and percent at the time of recording this video. Wall Street is getting very nervous because if Biden steps down, then who steps up? Well, presumably, Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris has not been president before, so that in and of itself creates more uncertainty. It potentially lowers the odds that Trump wins, and as of the last couple of weeks, the markets have been pricing in a Trump win. That's part of the reason why small caps have been outperforming, and that's part of the reason why cryptos have been doing well also. And if you are a longtime viewer of this channel, I say this all the time, the markets can handle bad news. They cannot handle uncertainty. And this, from my knowledge, would be unprecedented, something that has never happened before. The Democratic nominee that was priced at one point a 100% chance of being the guy on the ballot to dropping out and someone else stepping up just two months before, three months before the election. Now, typically during election years, you get about a 13% correction on average, sometimes less, sometimes more. This year, we've only gotten about a 6% drawdown in the S&P. And if Biden does formally drop out of the race over this weekend, I would imagine that sets the stage for a much larger correction. Now, considering all of the negative semiconductor news as well recently, this could really set the stage to be one SHIT show. You also have other earnings that will be coming out over the next couple of weeks. And if they don't impress investors, just add that to the fire. And the reason I'm saying this is not to say sell your portfolio that I would never say that I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a financial planner. I do not believe in selling the long term portfolio. Why sell the long term portfolio? Why sell your winners and pay 35 percent plus in taxes when you can borrow against it for 7 percent in this environment? Wait, wait till rates go lower. Borrow against it for 3 percent. I would never say to sell your portfolio, but I do think hedging makes a lot of sense right now, especially even considering the data that we got out this morning. Now, before we go over the data, I want to make it very clear. Election, semiconductors, earnings. That's great. That's fine, right? All of those things have their role to play in affecting the markets. They can all be important and all be impactful, but it's the economy and it's the labor market that is the number one risk factor to giving you a full blown crash. We're not going to fall 30, 40, 50 percent based on any of those factors. I mean, if earnings were like terrible, but that's not likely at all. But if the economy were to go into a recession, if the labor market were to weaken quickly, that could give you substantial downside. Now, I think it's far too early to say that is a likely scenario, but based on, again, the data we got this morning, it doesn't look great. So today we were expecting initial jobless claims for last week to be about 225,000. We actually came in at 243,000, the highest we have seen in the past year. This is sparking more fears or concerns that maybe the labor market is continuing to weaken. And the labor market's one of those 
trickle down effects. Imagine it like this. If you work at a job, you are providing a service or, you know, making a product that someone else buys, that company takes in money, your company invests in other things, and it affects everything. So if you lose your job, you stop buying the coffee, you stop buying the Tesla tequila, you stop perhaps buying, you know, chips or Chinese food that I have in the fridge. Perhaps you stop spending money. Now, if you start to see more people start to get laid off, that leads to a bigger snowball effect in the economy. We also had a continued spike in continuing jobless claims. This did not come in, well, I mean, it's at a one year high, excuse me. Yeah, this does not look great either. And these two data points, continuing jobless claims and initial jobless claims are the two biggest leading indicators of what's going on in the labor market. Because we know non-farm payrolls, we know wage data is all super lagged behind. The number one biggest risk in the near term is these geopolitical problems. Not only just the semiconductors and the bad rhetoric we heard from the Biden administration as well as the Trump potential administration, but also potentially Biden stepping down as early as this weekend, which it sounded like for a while the government is soft landing the Biden step down. It seems like they're just trying to cushion markets or the world for a step down with signs slowly starting to point to a, an actual step down and just long story short again i would expect at least a full correction from top to bottom if biden does step down over this weekend a 10 percent correction on the spy the etf for the s p would put you at about 510 which i do think would be a good buy the dip opportunity as long as the economy is continuing to hold up now, we also did have some positive comments from Fed Goldsby today that did at one point have a positive effect on markets before this Biden stepping down news did come out. These comments actually raised the odds of a September 18th rate cut to 93%, the odds of no cut by September only at 1.9%, and the odds of at least two cuts by September, that could be a cut July, that could be a cut in September, or a 50 basis point in September is sitting at about 5%. And markets are now firmly pricing in three cuts by the end of this year at about a 55.6% probability. The markets are pricing in two cuts at about 38.1%. Fed Goldsby said today in real rate terms, we have tightened substantially. Fed Goldsby says the cooling job market is definitely an area of concern. Fed Goldsby says the inflation fight is not done, but I feel a lot better. And the markets definitely took this as positive news when these comments came out. In fact, at one point today, the S&P 500 was actually up about a third of 1%. This is a round trip flip of over 1% today. Besides the whole Biden-Trump politics situation that is having a large impact on our markets right now, earnings are also very important. And we had some good news today. TSMC reported good earnings. A headline here from CNBC that, that says, TSMC's second quarter profit beats expectations as AI chip boom continues. TSMC reported net revenue rose 40.1% from a year ago, while net income increased 36.3% from a year ago. One of the executives at TSMC says, quote, the supply continues to be pretty tight all the way through 2025, they warned, adding that the firm hopes the tight supply can ease in 2026. And TSMC is setting a more positive tone around this quarter's earnings, but we also have Netflix today and after hours that typically causes a big sympathy reaction to the rest of big tech. So if Netflix has good or bad earnings, that will largely impact what happens to the rest of your Super 6, Mag 7, or even generalized markets. We also have Intuitive Surgical, PPG, and a couple of other stocks reporting earnings today and after hours. Tomorrow morning, we will have American Express, and I think that will be important for just judging how the consumer overall is doing. Tom Lee shares this 
post or comment from Mel on X that says, is, is NVIDIA over for the year? Tom Lee says, nope, but be aware of the rotation into the summer of small caps. FS Insight run by Tom Lee says, technology sell-off likely proved short-lived, but might not yet be complete. As can be seen below, RSPT versus RSP in ratio form has not violated its current uptrend and looks to be simply consolidating following its recent push back to new all-time highs. And I would like to share this about three and a half minute clip of Tom Lee explaining his reasonale or rationale behind the small cap summer theory. Good evening, Funstrat. Today is Wednesday, July 17th after the close, and this is our macro minute. Um, I want to start today's video by emphasizing uh, something we've been talking about for the past week, which is that we think that this is the summer of small caps. Um, and I think after our web my webinar today with Mark Newton, I'm convinced that there's a technical argument for why this rotation is underway and a small cap rally is coming this summer. Last night, he specifically noted that technology uh, looks to be taking a much needed breather, but he pointed out that we have now confirmed to mark 13 cells in place. And so I think you have to think of that as in the short term, a rotation out of technology. And he also thinks that the beneficiaries here are regional banks, biotech, and small caps. So basically you're gonna rotate out of technology and rotate into small caps. There's a lot of reasons for this. We talked about how the June CPI, we believe, gave the green light for small caps to rally. And um, you might say, well, didn't the market expect a Fed cut? You know, as long as that number was below 80%, it was hard to put capital work because you had close to 80% all year. And of course, those cuts came up quickly. But now we're back to the highest percentage ever, basically 100% probability. That was you know, it's the highest it's been. Um, I think that you got to look at the October to December rally as a template because that was on the Fed pivot and we had a 30% rally in the Russell. But this time we've got the Fed actually cutting at a time when the Russell's more oversold and cheaper. So we think that this rally is going to be something like 10 weeks, 40%, and maybe take the Russell 2000 close to 3000. And um, look at the short position here. I mean, short interest barely budged. It's the highest in the last four years. But think about this. It's basically the levels during the depths of the 2022 bear market. And, you know, in October to December, that was a huge short covering rally. And it obviously was huge fuel for the Russell. So we think that's what's underway. And that rally ranked only number 21 um, for Russell rallies. I, I think it's going to look closer to what you saw in 2020, which was 45% or even 2009, 44%, you know, or even 2021, 30, I think it's going to be something huge. Um, and uh, you, you haven't missed it because most of the gains come from weeks three through 10. And I know you might think inflation has come out of the market, but look at the one year break evens on using inflation for it's, it, it's 3.9%. You know, core CPI has been running at two. So, Markets are pricing in a doubling or reacceleration of inflation. I think it's still too high. And that's another green light for small caps. And then finally, as you know, uh, if Trump does win, I do think it's positive for Bitcoin, small caps, and cyclicals. Now, uh, there were some interesting takeaways from our Granny Shots webinar. Um, we did up another poll, but I want to highlight some answers. The first is, you know, what's your favorite sector? Look at this. Very few people are in place for that small cap summer. Um, I think there's a lot of room for people to get a lot more cyclical, especially look at the FS Insight side. 82% are still talking about FANG as their favorite trade. And uh, in terms of the number of Fed cuts, very few people are looking for three cuts or more, but I think that's the, that's appropriate given how much inflation's fallen. And lastly, keep in mind that we're still in the middle of earning season and there's a bunch of companies reporting Wednesday after the close and Thursday and Friday.
Bank of America's Sutmer says big base breakout in small caps IWM technically speaks in favor of continuation towards the 240s or even the 260s, which could potentially mean new all-time highs for the Russell. Barack Obama just said about 15 minutes ago President Biden needs to seriously consider the viability of his candidacy. Top Democrats have said Biden may drop out of the 2024 election as soon as this weekend. Semiconductor stock SMH suffered their biggest decline since March 18th. 2020. Dan Ives says, we believe the Trump trade does not ruin the AI revolution thesis slash tech bull market. The bears narrative on China and geopolitical worries we heard loud when the Nasdaq was 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 since 2016. And will again, when we believe tech stocks go higher into year end slash 2025. And one of the big reasons for this outperformance in the Russell is not just purely tactical in nature, short squeeze in nature it is also the expected earnings growth that is expected to be up 20 percent year over year from q4 2024 all the way through 2025 and even into 2026 it says here from gunjan banjiri she leads uh money and markets over at the wall street Con wall street journal she says individual investors are piling into call options and this is some research from jp morgan bespoke reports it's a strange day. Yesterday was the first time since April 2000 that the S&P 500 was down over 1%, but breath was positive. Seth Golden says, if ever there was a buyable market dip signal, the surge in total stock market net new highs at highest level since December of 2020. So as the markets are falling, stocks are actually going higher. And the Nasdaq composite yesterday closed down more than 2% on a day the Dow Industrials jumped to a new high since the comp Posit's inception in 1971 that's happened only twice april 14th 1999 and july 20th 2023 it fell more than five percent within the next month both times weekly small cap rallies of at least five percent have been followed by above average returns for both s p and the russell over the next one three six and twelve month periods rotations like this have only occurred three other times with every occurrence gaining thereafter b of a's trading desk says last year everyone lightened up on nvidia said the trade was over looked for idiosyncratic share gainer longs amd and pins and then in the first half of 2024 nvidia and big names exploded and idiosyncratic stuff got kicked to the curb i think there's a 50 50 chance that's exactly what happens again fake ai top into bullish cloud capex commentary and nvidia checks continuing to be robust and ai lives to fight another day. The Nasdaq 100 is down 4.24% over the last week, while the Russell 2000 is up 9.16%, the one week underperformance spread of 13.4 percentage points for the Nasdaq 100 is the third biggest ever behind only April 3rd, 2001 and December 20th, 2000. These are both instances in which we were actually coming out of bear markets or at least seeing some bear market rally off the bottom. And I think this post from Sven Hendrick really sums it up. Small caps up 11% in a week. The VIX up 33% in five days. You can see today the percent of stocks trading above their 50-day moving average is actually down about 1.64% today. So 1.64% of stocks are breaking under that 50-day moving edge moving average and you now have about 71 percent of stocks trading above the 50-day moving average which is still a very good number and you know normally when this goes up and is hitting high levels 70 plus is usually time to consider taking some profits and whenever this thing is down in the dumps that's usually a good time to buy the dip now this market has been pretty bifurcated in the sense of some areas have done well some areas have not done well big tech has been doing well the rest of the markets have not and that's why these numbers were very low like 35 percent of stocks trading above their 50-day moving average back here in late june as the markets were hitting new all-time highs which again led to this rally in small caps that normally doesn't happen unless you're coming out of bear markets so i think from that historical standpoint it's hard to say what's coming next, but I do think there are risks again, like earnings Biden potentially stepping down this weekend could be a gray swan or black swan event in and of itself. 
And not to mention the economy remains a toss up just how strong things are and how strong things will continue to be. In spite of those risks, the S&P is still trading almost at all time highs in the grand scope of things. You fall in about 2.3%. I think actually you should probably price in more risk here and that's why I'm still a little defensive. Um, I want to have some put protection on the portfolio really heading into late September because markets normally peak out from the super strong first half of July around July 17th. That's what happened. Yesterday was a pretty rough day and then the rest of July tends to be rough and during an election year August also tends to be pretty rough. Now think about it like this. We all know there's usually an election correction around October or so. Don't be surprised if that gets pulled forward to August or early September or even the second half of July for that matter if Biden does actually step down. Because it's normal to get corrections during election years, but this could really speed that up a bit. Now, in the S&P 500, the next big level of support that we really have is this 50-day moving average at 538. That is a very important level. And, you know, if, if we get down there, I, I would expect to see a bit of a bounce but I don't know if it will be long lived. It really depends on, on, on what happens, but that would be the first uh, potential buy the dip opportunity. The next level is that 100 day moving average at uh, 524 on the SPY. And then that 200 day moving average at 490 would be the level in which I would expect a lot more buy the dip opportunity from the broader markets. And as long as the economy does hold up, I would think that's a pretty good level to start doing some buying in stocks and areas that theoretically have corrected the most. Here on the day today, you do have 10 year treasury yields that are up about three and a half basis points. CNN's fear and greed indicator has dropped sharply from where it was just a couple of days ago when you were about in the middle of greed. Now you're right on neutral at 51. Which again, from that standpoint, if markets are truly neutral, there can still be a lot more downside before we get to fear or extreme fear where markets would, you know, potentially start to look at the risk to reward and start to buy the dip. So let me know what you think about all of this information down below in the comment section. Hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. You guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.